So we've now set our hoop and we've lapped the back of our blade flat. The final thing to do is to sharpen our bevel, the moment we've all been waiting for. Japanese chisels come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Generally, the bevel of a bench chisel is about 30 degrees, and that varies from manu manufacturer to manufacturer. However, I think that 30 degrees is quite a good compromise for a Japanese bench chisel. That is a little bit steeper than their Western counterparts, but the protection you get on the high carbon steel, I think, is very reasonable. This six millimeter here is actually a little bit lower than that. It's closer to 26 degrees. Uh, so we'll talk about a couple of little things we can do to make sure that we get the most out of that chisel. When I'm sharpening, if I really want to reset a bevel angle to about 30 degrees, I would put it in a jig uh, and go from there. However, when the factory comes quite close to 30, I try and roll with that and see how we go. When sharpening chisels, I generally try and start at a thousand, a thousand grit. Sometimes, something will need a little more adjustment and will call for something coarser like a 320 or an 800 uh, but a thousand grit is a good medium grit and a good starting grit if i'm using a chisel and it bluttons and loses its edge during the course of work i'd come back to a thousand grit sharpening a chisel freehand means managing the flatness of our bevel it is possible to produce a very very sharp chisel with a slightly rounded bevel that comes from sharpening and wiggling around the back bit in the air the difficulty with a rounded bevel is that the next time we go to sharpen, it becomes much harder to hit our edge very easily. So maintaining a flat bevel on your chisels is best practice and means that it can be resharpened quite easily anytime you need. If you do need to get a, a rounded bevel back to flat or you need to ch change a bevel angle up to 30 degrees or a bit down because you think it's too, too tall, then you can go to a jig and do it on a jig. Um, doing those sorts of things by hand can be quite advanced. Uh, I would much prefer to use a jig if I have heavy moving to do, but in terms of managing flatness of a bevel, there's a few things we can try. If we were to sharpen in thus direction, and I've seen it done by very, very skilled sharpeners, what we achieve is a very aggressive cut and a very quick result. However, we have a constant struggle in managing the movement of the chisel, and this is actually the least steady on the stone. Sharpening 90 degrees perpendicular to the direction of the cut gives us a lot more purchase and a lot more control in determining whereabouts uh, on, on our bevel we're contacting the stone and keeping and maintaining a flat surface on the bevel. However, that is less aggressive, so we can also find something in the middle in the order of 45 degrees or 60 degrees, which allows us a bit of a compromise and a little bit of the best of both worlds. When sharpening a Japanese chisel, it's important to remember that you have two steels in this blade. There is a hard high carbon steel right at the edge and there's a soft low carbon steel, iron, other laminating, laminating material in the back. It is very easy to be sharpening away and seeing lots of swarf and you know, going great guns and think that we're sharpening the, sharpening the edge, but where in fact we're sharpening the back. What I mean by this is, if I were to take a pass here, I've achieved a lot of material removed. However, that material is all coming out of the back of the chisel. And what that means is that I'm hitting nowhere near the cutting edge and I'm only removing soft steel right from the back where it's not going to be doing any damage to any timber anytime soon. To re remedy that, I need to focus my force into the front of the chisel, not simply by moving my hands, but by really just sort of paying attention to what's going on and I've achieved a very different result. It's not as dark because I'm probably not removing as much material because it's the harder steel, but I am close to hitting my cutting edge. That can be done by looking at where the material is coming off from behind the blade and by listening because we can hear the soft steel at the back and the hard steel at the front. There's a subtle difference, but it's noticeable when you're on the stones. So I'm going to subdivide my stone and make sure that I've got a few areas that I can work and that are flat. I'm going to just work one small area that I know is flat for about a couple of dozen strokes. And all that time I'm making sure to put pressure right into my cutting edge, not letting my pressure deviate to the back of the chisel. I'm always leaning forward into the into the edge to make sure that I'm getting a good cut right where I need it. 
As you can see, I like to really concentrate my hands around the pressure point. A lot of very good sharpeners are able to sharpen their bevel with one hand out here on the handle, which is, I think, an extreme feat of human achievement and something that I'm not very good at. I feel much more confident with my hands down close to the pressure. If you feel like you're getting lost in terms of where your flat bevel can be, I would take, take it all off the stone, put it down again, re-reference for flat, and go again. You can take fairly short passes to make sure that the geometry is not changing too much. A very long pass is quite aggressive and gets good distance on the stone, but can be a bit harder to manage in terms of roll. So I've now hit the entire width of my bevel a couple of times across the 1000 grit stone, and I'm quite happy with where I'm at. I've got a good finish, I'm hitting the edge, and I've raised a very gentle burr on the back of my chisel. It's a very frustrating phenomenon to try and communicate on a video, but I've got a little tickle on my thumb, which is a burr which is rolled over, which means that I've definitely hit my edge. So with all that 1000 grit done, I can put that back in the water to get my 3000 grit. On a chisel, I don't think that you need to go as crazy high as say a plane blade, for example, but it's horses for courses. If you really enjoy sharpening, you like going through the grits, then take it as high as you like. I'll, I'll generally do a 1000 grit and then something higher. In this case, I'm gonna just finish on a 3000. For flat bevels, you really need flat stones. When I'm sharpening chisels and things that I really wanna make sure that I've got a good flat bevel on, I'll be flattening every three to five minutes as I sharpen. I like to flatten with a diamond plate. There are many different ways of flattening and that's really a whole different topic altogether, but please flatten your water stones as regularly as you can. So with a couple of goes over the 3000 grit stone, I've refined my 1000 grit scratch pattern to a very nice finish. As you might have noticed, I haven't actually touched the back yet on any of these stones. I wouldn't, once I've done so much work to get my back flat and polished, I putting it on a 1000 grit water stone or even a 3000 grit water stone can really only do a damage. It's probably not going to improve it, but I do want to deburr that edge. So here it is nice to have a finer water stone hanging around. In a pinch, I definitely did this on a 3000. But I'm happy to take an 8,000. Make sure it's flat. Very important for it to be flat at this point. And I would simply deburr like so. So there we have it. We've got a fully set up Japanese chisel. We've got a set hoop, a back that's been lapped flat, and a sharp bevel. Ready for work and looking really good. I hope that's helpful, and I hope you get some chisels nice and sharp. Enjoy your woodworking.